Greetings. Good to be with you. Uh, just a uh, brief update. Um, <laughs> well, I guess nothing about what I do is really brief. Some people are like haiku, you know, haiku poetry. You say it with the least amount of words. And, um, you know, it's, it's or Zen painting. You, you make the, the, the ink wash figure with the least amount of brush strokes to get the exact character of the person or thing you're trying to create. And the same thing with uh, haiku poetry, which comes out of Zen as well. Um, it's, a, it's a beautiful um, form. The, all of Zen is just really the, some of the highest art in the, in the world, most revered. Um, should be by everybody, not by Zen practitioners, because it's really more of a cultural thing uh, of the Japanese culture rather than a religious thing. But be that as it may, um, and now, look, we see Christians getting a good dose of persecution, don't we, in Egypt? We just had a report of uh, several women, Christian women raped and um, uh, men executed. And now that it's, it's gone destabilized, I, you know, pray for our Christian brothers and sisters trapped in that situation. Um, and it is a very, uh, you know, I, I'm not really that up in arms. I'm, I have to tell you, I, the, the, in that region, I am not surprised that there is uh, some sort of coup d'etat going on. And I'm not surprised if, you know, although I don't believe WikiLeaks at all in any way, shape, or form, and I'll tell you why. Because... To me, Assange is simply an American asset being funneled disinformation and then it's putting, is putting it out there um, as literal truth. And there is no checking on that information. He just puts it out. And now he's sold rights to a movie. They're doing not one but two movies on him. Did you know that? He's got two dueling movies of his life as well as a book deal in the works and uh, international celebrity. So he is a multi-millionaire now, and uh, he's going to get very rich from not checking facts. He puts the facts out, yes, but does he check them and, and check the validity of the source? No. If I were in the NSA or the CIA, he would be my go-to guy for everything. So who benefits by putting in that the uh, USA is behind it? Now, let's say the USA has been behind the uh, uprising, um, which I kind of doubt. I mean, yep, when you say the USA, you're talking about a schizophrenic entity right now. You're talking about half the people in power who hate the United States and want to, quote, transform it, end quote. And you're talking about another half who are patriots, who are... Uh, you know, who put up with the Mubarak because Mubarak has a relationship with Israel and because we support Israel. This is the theory. I know, boy, this is so awfully arcane and, you know, backwards because of all the Jew hating and Israel hating going on, and especially in online conspiracy circles, which are not Christian but conspiracy religion. But eh, it doesn't matter what I say. People keep on keeping on. They just keep on listening. So go ahead. Go off the cliff. But, um, you know, I had the same argument with uh, Coast to Coast. Now, Coast to Coast actually bores me to tears. But, I mean, the same thing. The disinfo was very thick. And I hear Christians going on with uh, all the end time theories based on Coast to Coast. I'm like... Dude, where, where's your mind? That's like watching Jeopardy and getting prophetic messages from it. That's insanity. So I can tell you what's going to happen right now. There's a struggle going on for power between the left and the right between the communist-backed 
Muslim Brotherhood, which is the front line of, of the Kami takeover. Oh, no, they may not be friends, but there's a, there's a coalition there, okay? That ties in with the Obama administration as well, international socialism, and the Muslim Brotherhood. So they, they leave the Muslims alone, and they, these so-called Christians, which I don't believe, cite that our poor Palestinian Christian brothers and sisters are being harmed, therefore, and they come up with a conclusion. And this is the mind control. This is the meme, which is so popular. So popular. All right, and here's the other one. Got to back Israel because Israel is surrounded by enemies. Surrounded by enemies. And Israel's life is, uh, you know, threatened. And so if there is any belief at all, and, and Israel is the biggest ally of the United States in the Middle East, therefore a guy like Mubarak, who's now old, he needs to retire anyway. You know what I mean? I mean, he's gone. Okay, he's gone. It's not a matter of if, but when. He's gone. The coup d'etat was successful. They didn't kill anybody, but I mean, it was successful. These things usually have, as they say, you know, act one, act two, act three. So let me just lay it out. They toss Mubarak like tossing the Shah. Uh, some democratic kind of people come in and try to have elections. That fails, and the Muslim, uh, radical Muslim Radical Islam takes over and moves the whole country into the burqa, signed, sealed, and delivered. Anyone who rebels gets their head cut off. How does that sound? And, of course, the goal is to push Israel into the sea and to hate the West no matter what. You see, the communists have good friends with the Muslims. Especially, I don't mean Muslims. Now, I'm sorry. Radical Islam. Violent Islam. The communists love violent Islam because they can do the killing for the communists. So they hate the United States, which, of course, the number one commie thing, hate the United States. That's the number one thing. Number two, back the Muslims in the, in the insurgency against the United States' interests. Oh, but here's a kicker. The United States may have backed the uprising. So whose side are we on? The answer is no side. We're split as a country. So you have factions that are backing the uh, uprising, factions that are backing some, uh, you know, democratic alternative. But I think everyone knows that without any intervention and with uh, this president, there wouldn't be. So basically, because what's going on there, he likes. So basically, pretend you're going democratic, but really you want to go fascist to a fascist theocratic state because that's more akin to the communist New World Order state to come, even though... Islam and communism are not in bed publicly. They love and hate the same things. So they'll call it the people's uprising. <clears throat> then the bully thug criminals will come in, <clears throat> put on their little robes and hats and look, oh, so holy. And, um, you know, they're fake, all of them, of course, you know. Oh, Yes. You think anyone has faith in God that runs those places with all their imam status and all that? They don't have any faith in God. They don't even know God. They, all they know, it's all a power story. It's all about the money. It's all about the power. It's not at all about God. It's political. It's got nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with Islam in the sense of God. Nothing at all to do with it. And then, of course, um, you know, this Sharia law. You know, you know the, the other thing is, of course, we have the Suez Canal. And the Suez Canal is, um, you know, it is a, uh, let's, just, let's just put it this way. The Suez Canal controls the oil flow out of the Middle East. And um, the Obama administration would support an embargo, because he wants oil over $5 to break the back of people so that everyone screams for uh, alternative energy. That's his game he's playing. Which is not good for the economy or you, but he loves the, uh, the declining economy because it means the only reason he needs the economy to be up or having the illusion of being healed is so he can get reelected in 2012 to finish off what he started. And um, 
it just all depends whether or not, you know, you're on a playground with extreme bullies. And if you want any kind of commerce, I mean, the guy destroyed the uh, oil industry here and no one even challenged him. Where's, where's anybody there? No one really challenged him on it. So that's done. And uh, to me, it just looks like there is no real opposition. They're focused on Obamacare to dismantle it. Um, but you have to understand, I don't think they really understand who they're dealing with. See, you know, when I say that, I mean Tea Party patriots. Uh, I'm not sure they understand what they're dealing with. You know, the spiritual aspect of it. Because <laughs> most of these people, though they may claim to be Christian, they're not really spiritual. You know what I mean? It's just really more of a club affiliation. You know, it's kind of Christian, patriot. You know, it kind of goes, it's more of a secular thing. And I can tell you this. They're going to learn that they're up against, um, you know, total criminal politics and, and the courts, the presidency, the, you know, the, the judiciary and the Congress doesn't work. It's all what happens in the back room. And so a lot of these guys, are, they're, they're going to get an education. When you bring a knife, they bring a gun, okay? That's, uh, that's the one thing they got to understand. When you're in a street fight, these guys will fight with knives, chains, whatever, but one thing they will is fight dirty, okay? And the, the Tea Party people don't fight dirty. There's not any dirtiness among them. They're just kind of average people that... They're not, you know, they're, they're in for a big eye opener this year when they learn, you know, and, and also to have so-called Christian people hate the Tea Party is an oxymoron since most of the Tea Party people are, are, are really very much believers in the Lord, although the political movement of it at the, at the head seems to be kind of, kind of secular, but I mean, it goes from biblical ideas and uh, a lot of these people are, 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 are men and women of faith. I mean, they just ran for office based on, you know, a leading from the Lord. In, in some, no, many cases. And so that's where I have faith that, uh, you know, they will be successful. And, and the reason that I hope they're successful is because, um, well, for all, for a myriad number of reasons, and, and and one of which is to be able to live and work in 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 relative freedom. To have freedom of speech on the internet is another reason. To be able to um, be free from the uh, uh, oppression of I, and there's a lot of people that don't want them, like a lot of government agencies, and including CIA, NSA, you know. Uh, certain certain people that have operated above and beyond the law for a long time don't want to be regulated, don't want to be reeled in. And so the co-opting process has begun. But I can tell you, if we continue down the path that we've been on with Bush 1 and 2, both of those guys were not, you know, not what I would call conservative or Republican in terms of ideas. Uh, but then you had Bill Clinton and... Um, Barack Obama, these guys are not liberals in the sense of the Democratic Party and for what it stood for, like in the sense of John F. Kennedy. Not at all. These guys are more like, you know, to me, they're just despot, desperate for power and personal power. And it's really more about personal vanity with them than uh, anything else. But Bush, Clinton and Barack Obama all have one thing in common, and that is they want the new world order. You know, they want this... Uh, uh, you know, and so Obama, when he talks about uh, being competitive and all that, that's why people laughed at him because they realize he's just, you know, he's just talking out the side of his asshole because he's he's not, you know, they know what he's all about. So when he starts talking, you know, like he's a right winger or like he's a conservative or like he's, you know, for the troops or he's, you know, whatever. The only reason he's in Afghanistan is because he's told to be there. He's not allowed to leave. He promises he'll leave in, in June, some date that he has, uh, which is, in other words, we get our ass whooped and then he leaves. 
the drones will not win the Afghanistan war. <clears throat> you see, what you're dealing with is a spiritual war. Egypt, too, is a spiritual war. Obama talking out both sides of his mouth. He's like friends with Mubarak, and then he's against Mubarak. He can't really decide. He's got to put his finger up in the air. I mean, whoever elected this guy? Who, who is idiotic enough to elect Barack Obama with no experience and just like an ideologue from, you know, who's a professor? Who would elect a guy like that? America. The half that are uh, really in the, the mindset of who've caught the socialism disease. And it's not about making people's lots better. It's about putting everyone in slavery and everyone under governmental control. And ultimately, just remember, he wanted to do cap and trade and health care and, and uh, Pelosi and others. They wanted to follow you around and get your carbon footprint and then charge you for it. It's a big money grab. And to a certain extent, you had John McCain and other like what we call rhino Republicans that's why I have nothing to do with the Republican Party. I'm, you know, I'm so thoroughly disgusted with the, uh, how wimpy these people are. I don't consider them, you know, McCain, it's like the guy was a war hero. Well, when is he ever going to have a pair? You know what I mean? And then he's got this spoiled brat daughter that's uh, just a real um, piece of work. And what she needs to do is join the, you know, the leftists. That's what she needs to do. And stop trying to be a shill because no one, everyone's on to her. Megan McCain. And, of course, she starts off by mocking Sarah Palin, which I'm telling you that is a strategy that will fail for everyone who's, who, who's tried it. It hasn't hurt Palin at all. She's, she's gone straight to the very, 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 very top, much higher than she ever was as a, as a governor of Alaska. But, um, you know, what, what I love about her is fiscally she's awesome. Um, Strength-wise, you know, in terms of Ronald Reagan, she's the most Reagan-esque of all of them. And uh, – Peace through strength philosophy would actually help because, again, it's like the playground. You know, um, I guess a lot of Americans have a really bad view of themselves and wish to be humiliated, but I don't really put myself in that category. I don't want to be humiliated, okay? I don't like going around bowing and apologizing to other people uh, when we have to flex our muscles if someone's messing with us, I want to take care of it. I don't want to languish in a war for 10 years. This is that New World Order, skull and bones kind of stuff. We, it's good for business being in Afghanistan endlessly. And then Gates screaming for more money because he's an inept soldier to begin with. He has no strategy. He has no ability to win any war. Let alone, he probably can't even win the war of crossing the street. But he's an incompetent. And people can obviously see that. He can't stick to a budget. He has no idea what winning means, and neither do our troops, which is totally unfair. And um, if we're going to fight in a war, folks, then we better fight to win it, and it better be something that our soldiers can understand and comprehend. Right now, they can't. They're just there like as, you know, waiting to be picked off by the next IED, and that is totally unfair, totally unfair, and doing too many tours of duty and not being paid well. They're, they're, they're basically in, below the poverty line. Their families are breaking up. They have real psychological problems. Nobody is caring about the vets when they come home. And I just think that is, it, 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 I mean, I say, America, what is the matter with you? Have you no decency? And then I realize the America I'm talking to are the people that really um, can't wait to get in a line. And can't wait to go get their, you know, government check and are on the dole. These are the people that, that are screaming all this stuff and are disrespecting people that are putting their lives on the line. They're disrespecting, you know, for America. OK, even if Afghanistan doesn't make total sense, it, when, when one of our people dies, he's put his life on the line for his country, right or wrong. And then he comes home and he gets kicked in the teeth. You know, if he comes home wounded, there's no empathy. And this is the same thing that happened in the Vietnam War. And the, the, the people that criticized it the most were people that hated America. And they called the uh, returning troops pigs, baby killers. The uh, soldiers were so traumatized, most of them never recovered, who came back psychologically hurt from being in a war they didn't understand because it was uh, based on corruption, based on there was no clear objective. 
And so who pays? They blame the hippies, blame, you know, and, and the whole, you know, leftist movement blamed the individual soldier rather than the policymakers. So they threw a few bricks through the window and they burned down a few school buildings showing they're big men and women. They're fighting for principle, right? Uh -huh. Right. Well, they got two loaves of bread under their arm and everything. And, and, and now they became the yuppies in the 80s. And now they run everything. And now they want to drive the final nail into the coffin. And the reason that they're like that is because they didn't... Um, I kind of have to agree with this theory that uh, Glenn Beck put forth, and that is returning um, people that went through the Depression and World War II are real heroes. You know, these are, these are people that really sacrificed to, to keep the country from uh, imploding. Because, I mean, when the world was at war, every side would do anything they could. You don't think the Japanese would use a nuke if they could, or the Germans, or the Russians? Back in the, you know what I mean? So before you go around pointing the blame, just understand that there was a need to win. And the war was on, you know, two or three different fronts. And, uh, you know, a couple fronts in Asia and, and of course, the European. Well, there was Af Northern Africa, you know, the four fronts, really. A couple fronts in Asia, you know, there's the, the, the you know, the, uh, uh, and then a couple of fronts in, uh, on, on the other continents. I mean, there's Northern Africa. There's really Southern Europe and Northern Europe. I mean, it was, it was huge. And then, you know, the economy, you know, picked up after that. But uh, the economy was choked by FDR, who, you know, thought that he could spend his way. And he also confiscated, all oh, you gold bugs, he confiscated gold in 1933. You know, really soon after the Great Depression was declared for the good of the nation. I mean, so I don't know. You know what I mean? That's always something to... Uh, but then again, if you had uh, paper instruments you would have been zeroed out anyway. So the government wanted to make sure you had nothing and that you were dependent. It was the war that actually gave America self-respect back. In America, who liberated Europe, Europeans would have been enslaved. They would all be the USSR right now had we not been there. But um, there is no gratitude, of course. They just want to go on grumbling and complaining and while they, you know, steep themselves into more and more socialism. And now they, they, uh, they have a, a WTF moment when, when suddenly they're uh, being cut back on their, uh, y you know, on uh, <laughs> their entitlement programs are being cut back. They have to work a few more years before retirement. So now they're all screaming, yelling and rioting and burning buildings down. That sounds kind of like the uh, spoiled brats that came up out of the uh, Depression with depression parents that were the people that, that uh, in the 60s declared God is dead and America is going down. America needs to be transformed to a commie state. They were holding up pictures of Mao, pictures of uh, Che Guevara and everything else, and, the, and this whole communist takeover push with plenty of drugs, rock and roll, all that. It was all part of the same movement. The whole idea of which was to bring about, you know, the fat cats at the top, of course, benefit by all this. The real capitalists benefit by all this. And even um, aspects of military intelligence was pushing, were pushing the hippie movement and LSD and all that was being pushed by the CIA to, you know, by traitors within the CIA, by rogue agents, whatever you want to call it. You know, Timothy Leary was a CIA asset. And the whole point is to bring us into this Luciferian world order, which, which crosses, uh, uh, it crosses all party lines. Um, the Christian movement, uh, which is dwindling, which is the purpose of Christian ministry online is to destroy the Christian movement and to dis destroy Christians. That's the purpose of it. Because the people purveying it are co-opted, are corrupted. You know, it's all a political, it's all about politics, okay? It's all about money and politics. And basically, uh, hate America, um, hate Israel, uh, back the Muslims is the, that strategy is a death knell for actual Christianity. And the people who are doing that are traitors. And I have to, had to part company with many of them because I, I just find them to be absolutely um, insipid, Arrogant, condescending, and stupid. Really. I mean, 
you can't have a conversation with them because they are uh, they're so easily influenced by this. Um, I guess it's like a demon because in, in the whole hippie movement, I went through that. And I, so I see it repeated with people and I just see them as hapless dupes of the KGB. You know, we don't call it the KGB or communism. I mean, I use those terms, but, you know, uh, the, 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 the transformed global order to come. They're just dupes of that. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, they throw their hands up and go try to, you know, make the best deal with uh, Babylon they can. You know, and uh, they, they'll, they believe that if they keep going the way they're going, um, you know, somehow they'll be delivered. And it's just not true. Jesus was very much, is very much about individual rights. You know, the Lord God aligns with our Constitution in this sense. All rights, every good thing really flows from the creator. Okay, that that opening statement is, you know, you can life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and then freedom comes from our creator. We are endowed with certain unalienable rights that come from the creator, okay? Um, That sets us apart from every other country. And that's the thing they want to destroy. And to see Christians taking part in that is, um, frankly, um, I, I have no patience for it. I will tell you that right now. I find it disgusting, and I find it um, anti-Christ, and I find that they are not Christians. They are not believers in Jesus Christ, because if they were, they would have a hunger for freedom as well, a hunger for, a hung, a hunger for liberation. And a hunger for the gospel, you know, to spread the gospel and to not be taking up uh, bricks to throw through, you know, merchants' windows because they, uh, they're capitalist pigs or whatever the, whatever the, you know, whatever it is the KGB is pushing these days, you know. <laughs> um, and Egypt is a great, you know, I would say a great kind of a lab. You know, we can see all these forces at work over Egypt. And it's just, it's also a disgusting now match to see who's going to grab the power. Watching this is disgusting. But I see a number of Christians. Well, they're not brethren, so I won't call them Christians anymore. I'll just say they're a a number of deluded people that would have you believe, of course, um, that America is a slave state. That um, because it, and, and again, when I hear this kind of stuff, I feel very, very bad because these are people that have the most opportunities more than any other country that they would be in. They have tremendous opportunities. They've been given uh, more freedom relatively than any other country. They've been able to, you know, do things here they could never do anywhere else. And they sit there while they get their, you know, $150,000 a year and they, you know, and they complain endlessly. And, you know, they're, um, it's hard to watch. They complain endlessly. And when you really ask them what they want, they don't know. Then, you know, when they get confused, they run back to the Bible and mangle that a little bit so that their listeners out there can, uh, you know, be with them, you know, so they don't throw Jesus out. But I make a prediction. A lot of these people have lost their faith. You might have noticed. They will, um, I predict, once, once you have gone against Israel, okay, this goes in three stages. The first stage is go against Israel. Israel, not of God. We're really Israel, replacement theology, that crowd, okay? The, that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, okay, well, it's actually a few stages, not three. But, I mean, there's three big movements of the stage, okay? Uh, the, the next stage would be to find fault with the Bible, that there's something wrong with it, and they claim to be doing all this research, <laughs> right, that proves that they are the ones to listen to about how the Bible is flawed. This is a prelude to getting rid of the concept of Trinity as something evil. They... Okay, it leads to that. And finding some kind of fault with Paul, that he's not really the apostle. They have a hard time with that one. But, you know, usually it goes in these kind of stages where you have 
and, and then ultimately the, the getting rid of the Trinity means getting rid of the actual divinity of Christ. So start with any one of these things. If you have uh, Jesus Christ, not a divine savior, but a man, you know, the, the, the best among us, you know, that we are to be like him, et cetera, et cetera. If you have like that, that philosophy, usually when I say against the Trinity, what I mean is against the divinity of Christ. Okay. So, uh, so just watch it against Israel. It's because it's a, because it's a spirit. It's a demonic. Um, it's a, it's a whole program. It's a mind control thing. And I've seen this over and over with people. They, they, they question the Bible is okay. The Bible's not valid at all. They start finding all these other gospels. They find all this other information and you have to go to them to get your information because they've researched it and you haven't. So you tune in. All right. And then, uh, they're going to find fault with the Trinity is in Luciferian Illuminati concept, but that's just simply a ruse to diminish Christ. Okay. That's the whole point of that. They will twist Bible prophecy in finding something wrong with it, but they'll twist it first and have theories like, you know, against, um, uh, like I say, against Israel, against the Jews, you're really the Jews, and even taking the big leap of you're the 144,000. But it's all in an effort to destroy the Bible, destroy confidence in the Bible, doctrines of men, uh, at, you know, anti-Trinity, um, anti-Israel, anti-Jew, uh, and then feeding you loads of conspiracy theories. And when all is said and done, here's what you wind up being. And this is what's happened to everybody who's gone that way. Um, they have no faith. Their faith is gone. Their faith has been replaced by the conspiracy theory of history, the conspiracy theory of the Bible, the conspiracy theory of uh, Paul the Apostle, the conspiracy theory of the Trinity, the conspiracy theory of Israel, of, uh, of, uh, you know, you know, of, of concepts such as dominionism, and all, they have all these theories. What it all ends up doing is destroying a person's faith in total. So that when the push comes to conform to the new world order, meaning the troops are on your streets, the foreign troops are there telling you to get in the line, you, Christian, get in your line because you have no faith. You don't believe that God would take care of you. So you take the mark of the beast ultimately. And that's the point. That's the whole program. I just laid it out for you in specific, perfect. You, even if you don't like Jews or Israel, any of it, you don't, let's say you don't understand it. I'm just simply saying, don't say it's not of God. Just say, I don't know. You know, go ahead and criticize Israel for attacking the Palestinians or whatever. You can do all that you like. You know, someone tried to say that I said something about criticizing Israel makes you go to hell. I never said that. Whoever said that put words in my mouth. That is absolute false. I never said that. It's when you reject Israel and you say, this is not prophecy. It's like what the, okay, the Catholic Church rejected Israel in total and proclaimed Israel not of God. Okay? So all the people, all you out there who say Israel's not of God, you've got good company. You and your friends at the Vatican are all in the Antichrist spirit. Fine, great. But it is the Antichrist spirit. You already knew that about the Vatican, right? The obelisk, more obelisk. Uh, it's like going to church with a big obelisk in it, you know. Oh, great, Pope. Wonderful. And they're the biggest purveyors. The Catholic Church will be the big church of E.T., bringing in conformity to E.T. When they do the rollout of the E.T., it's all about us bowing down to our superior leaders and doing what they tell us. And the Catholic Church will be right there because they've already gone. Because God's rejected them. Why? Because they, just recently, that doesn't mean you, you could be a person trapped in the Catholic Church who really believes in Jesus. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying that the church body, the, 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 the political body of it, it's re, God has rejected it. And the, the reason why is because they rejected Israel and, and uh, blamed the Jews for all the trouble in the Middle East. So they're gone, baby, gone. 
The Pope now has no credibility and the church has no credibility. And you'll watch what will happen is the Lord will curse um, the Catholic Church. And the curse is to lose their faith and to be folded into the ET world order. And instructing all their believers to bow down to ET as well. And that's the curse that they're going to be suffering. Meaning lack of faith. Of course, I never met a a Catholic priest that had faith. Have you? I haven't. There was one guy I knew that, uh, there's one guy that I saw that that I didn't meet him personally, but he was uh, ministering to the gangs of Chicago. Okay, there was one with great faith. But I mean, very, very few and far between. Last thing I heard, the guy who was actually doing real exorcisms, which is really needed because so many people are demonically possessed today. It's, it's, It's almost like the norm in America. Half the people here are possessed and need deliverance. So we need exorcists. The guy gets fired for being, you know, for real. (laughs) Of course, that's the curse of the Catholic Church. I wasn't surprised a few months ago when they proclaimed Israel not of God and Israel and Jews not the chosen people. All they're saying is, let me just break it down for you. All they're saying is this, that the state of Israel is not fulfillment of Bible prophecy, period. And any, any Christian I come upon, or they say they're a brethren with me, that embraces the, uh, the Muslim push, uh, not brethren with me, and I want nothing to do with you. I want, no, I want no connection whatsoever, ever again. Uh, because you, sir, are um, not only suicidal, you want to take the, everyone else down with you, but you're very dis- God is displeased that you would embrace the forces that want to destroy Israel displeased at a force that's being used to bring in Sharia law, and uh, which is not God's law, it's Sharia law. Displeased. My prediction of you who have embraced that is you will lose all faith in Jesus Christ. You will not, there will be no faith going forward. You will be, you know, quasi kind of hippie spiritual, but you will not, will not, be in the beloved at all because right now you're conflicted you're going to have to make a choice you go with the lord and his people or you keep going the way you're going and and i guarantee you when that day comes <clears throat> when they put a bullet to your head <clears throat> a gun to your head and they say you either uh, take this mark you either sign on with us or you're not going to have any money any food any anything You'll have no faith. You're going to go ahead and accept it. And meaning that you'll be, and the Bible says, you'll be cut off forever. And it all starts with, it just starts with these little streams. I saw the Christian patriot movement throw Jesus under the bus and embrace the new age. They are gone, baby, gone. You made Alex Jones a multimillionaire. Congratulations. Gone, baby, gone. Your movement is history. I saw these Christians embrace this whole conspiracy theory. And so to entice you, they don't, you know, they either do uh, mumbo jumbo scripture. You're the 144,000 Israel, not of God. Listen to me, not anybody else. Uh, And then they give you plenty doses of this is Armageddon tomorrow, keeping you fear based. The Gulf is going to kill 100 million people, blah, 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 blah. Oh, they went hysterical. They were telling, you know, they all, all of them, all these people that had all, all these people I'm talking about, they, they were purveying that whole Gulf and it never happened. And now they're saying, yeah, but the Gulf Stream, the oil uh, stopped the Gulf Stream. The oil didn't stop the Gulf Stream. Nope. I, I, I just, you know what? I just don't believe that. And the other thing is everything is cyclical. And so the Gulf Stream, this may disappoint people. But if the Gulf Stream really starts up, what it is is very weakened and, and, and kind of stopped. But it has more energy now than it had a while back. But I got a kind of a leading on it, and I'll just be taking a risk here. But this is what – this was like a, a thing I got right away. It will re- – if God wants to, he can resume it again in full force. Don't be surprised if that happens. 
My inquiry with John Moore really, you know, he, but he did say that Gulfstream would stop. He did predict that. And, it, you know, and basically it's been a few months now since it did. So he, you know, we've had him on. We did all these shows with him about all this stuff and we needed to follow up. So I did. It had been, you know, I wanted to wait until I, you know, till, till this winter and the weather and all that. But again, I don't blame necessarily the oil on the Gulfstream and nobody can make that connection. And I don't, there's no, there is no, um, absolutely no connection between the new, what's going on with the new Madrid fault and the, in, in, in FEMA, which, like I said, FEMA could be just be doing an exercise, uh, regarding, um, you know, all the requisitions made can be an exercise regarding a possible disaster in the new Madrid fault. Okay. You know, can they trigger a quake? Well, yeah, I've been in California. I know they can trigger quakes. Okay. But what I'm saying is that, um, you know, you're not, see, well, here's the problem with these people that say they're Christians and they're all high up on the, what, what was it? It was, uh, certain people said, you better move out of there. 20 million people are going to be dead tomorrow. Screaming, yelling hysterically, getting any, every conspiracy bat wing theory they could about the Gulf. That's an underground volcano. It's a hole that can never be shut. They don't even believe they, these people don't believe that the oil well is capped. They believe that it's still spewing out, which is false. And they're teaching that to people. And then they're going to teach you that there's something wrong with the Bible. And then they're going to teach you that, you know, it, it goes on and on and on and on. But where it leads is zero relationship to the Lord, 100% disconnection from the Lord God, Jesus Christ, Yahweh, Elohim, Jah, whatever. Completely disconnected. Completely. Um, see, if you don't have faith, you won't be able to make it. It's your faith that makes you th come, brings you through, not false conspiracy theories. So... <clears throat> John Moore cited someone's research that they didn't believe the Gulf Stream would start up again, and I disagree with that. I believe that it, it, it can go forward, backwards, sideways, whatever. Just like no one could believe the sunspots, sunspots all stopped during the end of solar cycle 23. Here we are in solar cycle 24, not surprised about the Gulf Stream, not surprised about all the weather because of solar cycle 24 already predicted that. But, of course, people don't look at these Cycles have been going on for a long time. So there's all this hysteria now. And I want to be the voice of caution. Nothing is going to go the way the uh, fear mongers are telling you. Because there's always a force of good and a force of evil. And things tend to not go all evil or all good. But they tend to go sideways a lot of the time. And a lot of time passes and people grow old and die. While waiting for their favorite theory to come due. Um, so how many Christians are out there calling Armageddon with the Middle East and then the Suez? The, 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 oh, yeah, the blogs are going crazy. The Christians are the worst of it. And the most, well, they're not Christian. They couldn't be because they're hysterical idiots. What, that's not of God. And, you know, they're, they're all over the place. Then they start quoting scripture and then they're off to the races. I, I, it's disgusting. They are disgusting to me. And when push comes to shove, they're not going to have my back when it, if it was really tough. They're going to give in and bow their knee because they have no faith. Their, 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 their God is conspiracy theory. Um, I feel it, you know, in early spring here anyway. We've had uh, temperatures that have been very, very uh, nice the last few days. And uh, pretty much normal and above normal temperatures. So I guess there goes that theory. California, L.A., my birthplace. I have a special, you know, relationship to Los Angeles. Well, it's been about 80 degrees, <laughs> 82 and perfect. Okay, so let's go somewhere else. All right, Washington. Well, they're digging out. You know, <clears throat> did the Gulf, did the slowing of the Gulf Stream or the stopping of the Gulf Stream, the break, actually the break, the Gulf Stream has kind of just gotten weak and broken up. Well, did that um, cause the weather anomalies in Europe? Yeah, probably. 
Can it start up again? Of course it can. If 10 people got together and prayed, it would start tomorrow. And and I know that people are going to hate it. When it starts up again, you know what they're going to do? They're going to go, oh, that's just false reporting because they're going to have to cover their asses, right? Because they put all this information out that you're basically doomed. This is the end of you. Listen to me. Tune in. So the Christians online all became fear mongers. That's the way I'm going to report it to God as being a witness here, an observer. They all became fear mongers and, and many of them online that were conspiracy theorists went to left wing KGB influenced politics. They even started backing the Muslims. When the Muslims are killing and raping our Christian brothers and sisters right and left. No, you don't ever hear about that. They don't report that. They just report what Israel is doing to the uh, Palestinians. That's what they focus on. I admit I haven't been happy with uh, Netanyahu. He, to me, is not the same guy that was kind of a lion back in the past. He's more of a patsy now, just looking for uh, handouts and friends. And I, you know, I... You, you need, you know, strong leadership. I mean, I can criticize all I want. No, that doesn't mean I'm going to hell if I criticize. Now, does it? No, well, they're, they have an obelisk too. Well, of course they do. Well, that means they're not of God. Well, they can say whatever they want. But Satan doesn't own Jerusalem. Anyway, I see very clearly what's happening. Very, very clearly. And um, I don't want to just sit here and, and, and be disgusted with them. Um, I just, you know what it is? I don't like people using Jesus in the Bible when they don't, when they're non-believers to push their political ideologies or the conspiracy theories. You know, I just don't like it. They said as chicken little, you're dead in the Gulf with the oil spill. And, and then you didn't die. What happened is Obama used it as an opportunity to shut down all drilling forever. Okay, fine. Fine. But these Christians played right into that political move. They caused that move to actually happen. Where was their faith meaning truth if they had faith? Did they ever answer for their false prophecies? No. They never answered for their hysterical lies. They went on because there were more people who would tune in to listen because those people are bored. But then they, those listeners, got infected with the same disease. They lost their faith. Now they're really hurting, you know. This is a time where you need faith. You've got to be tough, 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 and rough. Meaning Jesus is your strength. Because we don't have enough strength to overcome what's going on now. I've seen Christians picked off. I've seen the gang stalker. I've named them on the show yesterday. People who are gang stalkers. They're in this thing. They don't love the Lord. They have nothing to do with the Lord. The people that I mentioned on the show yesterday have no relation that I can see in the spirit. Nothing. No connection whatsoever. And no faith. It's all a big game. It's a confidence game to get you to listen and to stalk those and try to be condescending and mean-spirited and evil to anyone that disagrees. No. Yeah. And that's their constant litany of life. I would hate to be one of them. I'd hate to be that miserable. Really. It's awful. You want to do something for them, but they'll bite your hand off. They'll take it as criticism. They won't listen. They won't repent. And like I said, that side, that's all into this whole uh, conspiracy theory. And then they they go ahead and throw you the conspiracy theory of the Bible. Yes, you're the 144th. They'll give you a bone like that to keep you on the page with their um, comic book... uh, Satire of life. I tell you, um, what we need are people that will stand up to that kind of thing. You know, that won't just go there to get ratings on their shows. We, you know, I know so many people that have lost their faith. Do you realize that they're going to die with no faith because of these people? That they've been led into complete, total apostasy and death. And they're going to die. Is it my fault? 
when I could have said more, should I have? They're going to die with no faith and they're going to die in fear, my friends. Because these people hate God. Not just no relation, but hate God and want nothing to do with him. And so they become gods pushing their theories. So, you know, mixed in with lots of um, enticing, titillating sort of National Enquirer type stuff. And the whole goal is for you to be faithless like they, the purveyors, are faithless. You will be faithless like them. I've never met more fear-mongering but fearful and angry people as these. Well, I mean angry in a, in a narcissistic, selfish kind of way. You know, mine, that kind of thing. Don't touch mine. And, uh, you know, they would love to get rid of me. They look for every opportunity. They, they, they stalk me every day. You know, I do all these shows on gang stalking and I have them right there. They're the Christians who are the gang stalkers. But then this is nothing new to me. Now, I had that in the churches, too. They have gang stalkers there that are assigned, you know, get into your house to infiltrate, to get, you know, information on you and then to discredit you, uh, to do uh, defamation of character on you online and things like that. That's what they're there to do. Because they are, they hate the truth, these people. And they all live in fear. They all kind of hold hands, you know, together. It's all about, they, they, they lean on each other as a crutch rather than the Lord. Because they don't really believe in the Lord. They just know you'll tune in if they do some Bible prophecy. If they, they say, I have the real theory. This is new. There's nothing new under the sun. There have been people twisting the truth forever. Forever. Nothing new there. And then when you don't fall in line, they'll stalk you, meaning defamation of character and uh, putting out all kinds of lies to discredit. That's a classic, um, you know, Stasi, KGB, uh, COINTELPRO trick, proving that they are agents from the other side. Otherwise, they wouldn't bother with you to defame you, to lie about you. They wouldn't have anything to do with it. They want to infiltrate. They want to get the people that listen to you to listen to them. Then they want to discredit you. And then if you don't conform, throw you out. Not going to work. Sorry. Not going anywhere till the Lord tells me to go somewhere. And uh, the truth is out about you people. Big time today. If it hasn't been... Uh, over the last year and a half, two years, three years, four years. No, actually, I've been uh, doing this kind of work for years and years. But when I say it was like a virus, the anti-Jew thing, anti-Israel thing, it's, it's, it, the virus leads to this. It's actually the Antichrist spirit. And it leads to, like I say, no faith. But, you know, the Trinity's gone. The... Um, you know, because that's all, the, that's all false doctrine given by the doctrine of devils. These are given by men and all that. The Trinity was never intended to be anything more than um, just crystallizing the, the, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I mean, that's all it's doing. It's just kind of putting it into one Godhead. It's not three gods or whatever. I mean, I mean nobody believes that. But they want to make some, they want to gin it up because ultimately it's going to go to Yahweh only, meaning Jesus is diminished, and then, and then um, Jesus doesn't have the power to save. I have the power to save you. Uh, there's something wrong with the Bible. Listen, which, which tra- look, people that are not too bright, listen. There's something wrong with the Bible equals listen to me, not the Bible, or you can't read the Bible on your own. I will tell you what it means. That's what, it, that's what they're saying. You feel insulted? Your blood boiling already? Is, have you had enough? It's a sin to indulge yourself in these doctrines. Simple faith, simple truth. Keep it simple, stupid. And if it's, if it's something more complex where you can't get it on your own, but you have to tune into them to get it, that's not Jesus. That's not faith. 
If you have to hate the United States to get it, that's not faith. When I say hate, what do I mean? I mean to say that <clears throat> though you've been blessed <clears throat> to adopt the doctrine that you're simply a slave in Babylon and um, that all the Constitution, all that was a, was a dupe and you're just all dupes unless you uh, throw that all out. <clears throat> that it, it's got nothing to do with you. That is what I mean. Um, in other words, how, how is it blasphemy? Because it's, take some, it's taking something God gives. Well, what about the Masons? Yes, there were Masons. The wheat and the tares were growing together. I'm sorry. Okay, fine. There's no Santa Claus. But at the same time, when God gives something for you to call it of Satan, what that is is blaspheming God. And it means you can't tell the difference between something God gives and something Satan gives. The other thing is, you know, we're all corrupt. We all need to repent, including this nation needs to repent. Israel needs to repent. A lot of people, you know, anyone who's thrown God out needs to repent. You throw God out, you'll end up doing atrocities. Then you need to repent for that. You know, I mean, yeah, there's, there's, there's all kinds of problems. But, I mean, you know, the people that you've got now want to destroy the, um, uh, the markets and, you know, cause a depression, make everyone dependent, and then, you know, they'll meet it out for you. I mean, it's, it's, it's beyond disgusting. And all of this is coming because the people have thrown their faith out. And they've all run uh, a million different directions toward false gods. And the Bible is very clear. <clears throat> now, we can take a little bit of, from Ezekiel and we can see j just the way the Lord is with these. Um, you, you know, I mean, this is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I will set my jealousy against thee. This is Ezekiel 23. And they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away thy nose and thine ears. And thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters. And thy residue shall be devoured by the fire. Uh, doesn't sound good. Yes. They shall also strip thee out of thy clothes. And take away thy fair jewels. Thus I will make thy lewdness to cease from thee. And thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them or remember Egypt any more. Interesting, huh? For thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them whom thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom th my, thy mind is alienated, into the hand of the enemy. You, this is the Jews. And they shall deal with thee hatefully and shall take away all thy labor and shall leave thee naked and bare and the nakedness of thy whoredom shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. What do you mean by lewdness? Well, what do you think it means? All the things we've talked about here for so long. False gods, rituals to those gods, okay? Which is uh, sexual in nature and murderous in nature. It's always the same. That's what... That's what lewdness means, okay? Perverse. I will do these things unto thee because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen and because thou art polluted with their idols. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister, therefore I will give her cup into thine hand. Thus saith the Lord God, thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large, thou shalt be laughed to scorn, and, had in, and held in derision, it containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with the cup of astonishment and desolation, with the cup of thy uh, sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink a, and uh, suck it out, and thou shalt break the shreds thereof, and pluck off thine own breasts. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast forgotten me, and cast me behind thy back. Therefore bear thou also thy lewdness and thy whoredom. That's an example of how God deals with such situations. Just found it stunning how we're talking about Egypt here. 
and you're seeing Egypt. Egypt. Egypt is under judgment, as you can see. What's happening to Egypt will not be, well, I might as well say it. What's happening to Egypt was not going to be good for Egyptians. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss, Egypt. You're doing the work of the, of the controllers and handlers behind you, Egypt. There are people behind the scenes who are getting the uprising, and you're all the, uh, hopefully you'll get good offices. You will not. God can bring a people down to nothing overnight. God can lift up a people to something overnight. God can stop the Gulf Stream or start it up again overnight. He can make it so that the new Madrid fault goes off or stop it. He can make a planetary body come in and, and hurt the earth or not. Notice how no one's really clear on that. No definitive astro, you know, astronomical evidence. Nothing but confusion among scientists. No understanding of the sun. Nothing but argument and confusion. The scientists are all vexed. They don't know what anything means anymore. Their instruments, remember I told you this a long time ago, it would get, if we shift just a little bit dimensionally, their instruments will no longer work. So they'll all be confused and they'll all try to cover it up because they're all just rats on the, you know, on the Titanic. And the other thing is, uh, yet the Titanic is sinking. A lot of them just rearrange the deck chairs. They don't know what to do. Their paradigm doesn't work anymore. Truly, God's in control of all these things. So what does he say? He says, don't worry. Put your faith and trust in me. Seek me out and you'll be all right. Supernaturally. Def defying the laws of physics. Put your faith in him and he'll just part the waters for you. So don't worry about all this stuff. And don't worry about the conspiracy theory of history. And so, you know, I meant to tell these guys, I did the big show on gang stalking with the, um, you know, with Dr. Robert Duncan and uh, Dr. John Hall. And this is probably as, about as good as it gets in terms of uh, what's going on. Both these guys are believers, by the way, you know. Uh, but I can say this, I'm kind of more of a believer in the sense that, uh, you know, they, they didn't really believe that uh, this, the, if, if I was targeted with this, the, the uh, Navy fight song, and then that turned out that uh, Dr. Hall did confirm that, okay, that that was a program going on, and how many TIs reported that. So then I said, yeah, but I've been left alone. They sort of laughed like, well, yeah, well, they, they can leave you alone for a while and pick it up again. I handed it over to the Lord. It didn't stop, you know, basically what gang stalking is. To me, it's just persecution. It didn't stop that kind of stuff, the weird kind of like human gang stalking. And even if I did hear the, uh, the, 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 the thing again, you know, um, and it's interesting, Trish didn't hear it. So... But I found that very confirming that Dr. John Hall confirmed yesterday that 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 was like a secret thing, like with abductees. What happened? There are certain things they keep secret that only abductees know. So if someone's faking it, they wouldn't say it. So I said the Navy. I did that. I blurted this out. So now they can't use that as a control question. But the Navy fight song is the thing. So now that people know that, they'll say, you know, fakes can go and say they're hearing the Navy fight song and try to muddy the waters. You know, infiltrators trying to obfuscate this whole thing and make, you know, discredit it. Um, fine. But I mean, that was the thing that was reported. I didn't know that till yesterday. Right on the air. Kind of a mind blower. But I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. The, the only thing I know about this is this is just electronic spiritual warfare. God can turn back all the uh, V to K, V to skull, V to whatever, all this stuff, microwave, you know, they have it. The, I've seen the patents, folks, so I, I didn't cite them yesterday, but there are patents for, for example, microwave transmissions, voice to skull. There are patents on it. It's already been proven 
And this is, you're going back to, you know, the late eighties on this, that it, they could talk into a microphone and you could hear the voice in your head. And then they could also, because your brain is a transmitter, they can then have feedback or a transmission from your brain as to what you think about that voice. I think the Lord just shields me, you know. I think when I heard that, I prayed, and then it went away. Then he, you know, sorry, I'm not having the same experience as other TIs. It went away. And they were laughing, saying, well, you know, I don't, they didn't believe it was gone away. Maybe I'm in denial. You know, at first, maybe you're not, you know, maybe this isn't, you know, what you're saying isn't real. You're crazy. Then later, okay, you're not crazy, but, but, but you, maybe you think it's going to go away. And, um, you know, and then the psychiatrist will say, oh, hearing voices. Well, no, I was hearing the Navy fight song <laughs> and it went away, but I was hearing it in a way that was, you know, I didn't even know the whole song and it would play the whole, the whole thing. So let me explain what was happening. They're playing the song cause I'm hearing it done by a, uh, like a marching band and I'm hearing that whole thing, you know, every note, every, you know, all of it because it's being played off a CD or something into the microwave and then into uh, your head. Anyway, I just haven't had it since that time. Of we're going now. We're going back how many years? Two thousand four, five, six, seven, eight, seven years. So I don't know about them, but I I feel like the Lord is my uh, strength here. You know, uh, it, you can't fight. Okay, well now we're turning to TIs. I should have done a whole show on this, and I will. TIs, you can't fight this thing with tinfoil hats and blankets. I noticed a lot of new agers have crept in there in these uh, chat forums for TIs. I've looked at all of them yesterday, and I wouldn't join. I don't trust any of them. I, I can tell you this. They start recommending, you know, holistic health and all that to fight it. You can't fight it with that. Come on. That's got nothing to do with it. Oh, spirituality is another one. You can't fight it with quasi-spirituality. You need... The beams blocked supernaturally. There's no technology on earth that can protect you from it. There's no diet on earth that can protect you from it. This is just people trying to horn in with their businesses and sell you something. Don't be a dupe, T.I. Don't be a dupe at all. If you're targeted, don't be a dupe. You can't do holistic anything and, and you know... Uh, it's only going to be by the strength and power of the Almighty that you're going to walk through it. Period. End of story. And how do you think all this awareness of it all has come out so strongly? The grace of God also. So, and, and, and yes, uh, Dr. Duncan already has pioneered medical uses for uh, microwave technology and uh, neural in other words the idea that that through your thoughts you can you can um, through getting data you can give feedback as if you're there though you're remote two people in the field in a military application taking care of patients in the field even if you're not there through robotics and through being like hooked up and you could treat many more patients that way so there could be good uses too and a lot of the mind control um you know, has been countrywide, worldwide. You don't think they're beaming Egypt? You don't think those people are all TI? Everyone in the street is a TI. Riots are manipulated by psychotronic weaponry because everyone knows that riots will play into the hands of the enemy who's brought the thing in the first place. So when someone goes a rioting, they're playing in the hands of the New World Order because they're just stupid, I guess, or something else, maybe being beamed. Maybe they're susceptible because they're weak in faith. They're weak politically. In other words, they don't think things through. They don't, they're not independent thinkers. They're just conformity thinkers, right? So they're easy targets. And so you whip them up to go uh, do some stuff, and they go do it. And where does burning buildings and throwing bricks through windows get? It plays into the hands of the people that want the power who don't care about the people rioting at all. They just use them and then throw them out or kill them. 
And I see it over and over again, the curious, incredible, you know. So, yes. And has that technology been there thousands of years ago? Yes. All the high-tech satellites they're using now has been here thousands of years ago. And since the beginning of time. There is nothing new. This is nothing new under the sun. I will tell you again, you can't fight this with, with, in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a physical, material manner. You cannot fight all that the um, electronic harassment, surveillance, gang stalking, all of it, all of that is, to me, spiritual warfare. I would never even attempt to fight it in any other way. And any group that's touting, you know, Buddha, Jesus, and all that, I would never join it because that's BS. That will never work. Um, are there brothers and sisters in hospitals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, it, it, can you hear um, a, a lot of times prophets were considered crazy, you know, and locked up. They would try to bleed them, right? To bleed the insanity out of them, right? Make cuts and bleed them. But really, uh, you know, if you have the Holy Spirit, you know, that trumps electronic harassment. But then when you talk via the Holy Spirit, that sounds crazy to people. And they're, they're going to move to lock you up. But what happens? Somehow they forget about you or they get distracted and it doesn't, nothing happens. Oh, <laughs> gee, I guess God is stronger than them. Yeah. Same thing with being out here and, you know, and, and, and telling it like it is, you know, telling the truth about uh, online Christian radio people. I'm telling you, I'm, I just, you know, it's, a, it's incredible. And the need to uh, spread fear mongering in order to sell tickets, you know, because they can't do it with the straight gospel. Now, and that's the truth on that. They just can't. The straight gospels just won't do it. Now, I'll just tell you, tell you again, really, the way you fight all this stuff. And UTIs that are secular, there's nothing you can do. Jesus has to come into you. You know what I mean? You've got you to you make a move there. There's nothing I can do for you. But because you've heard my voice, I believe the Lord will minister to you. And the holy angels will minister to you. And you'll see. You'll see it's all real. You know, you've seen the satanic. And then there's a dark side. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> you've seen the satanic, which proves what? That there's an angelic, right? That there's a, that there's a God. And light versus dark, light fights the darkness. So don't expect anything to be like, you know, overnight, whatever. You know, things push back and forth. No one knows what tomorrow will bring in terms of earth changes or not. You know, we, we examined all this with John Moore and the fact that it was starting to look like, you know, day after tomorrow is the movie and, you know, are we going to an ice age? We may go into an ice age. And it may look like the day after tomorrow. And then again, it may not. And then again, it may not. And he would be the first to say that. He's also a fellow believer. He'd be the first to say that. You know, don't just believe what anyone says there. We put the information out. We talk about it. And then do your own research. Don't just buy into it. You'll be like all those people that went, you know, hysterical over the Gulf and, you know, told, you know, and cried uh, wolf once again. And, but they'll do anything. Then now they're going to focus on Egypt. And, you know, then that'll have a whole theory to it. And, and they're going to go on and on because that's how they sell tickets to their dumb radio shows. And that's just, you know, basically the idea of delivering souls into Christ is out the window. And then when they get, uh, when you start calling them on it, they get, oh, well, I just love, everything's about love. And they start this love thing. While at the side of their mouth, they're, they're, they're being condescending and putting everybody down around them. Because they're the one with the real inside theory. They're the one who's, you know, everyone else is late to the party. They're the one who really give you the good information. And they go, oh, yes, I see it's all happened. And then you realize it hasn't happened didn't happen still here 
if all the things they said hap- would happen would happen, we would be uh, dead, all of us right now. And these people are still on the air. They claim we'd be dead, false prophecy, and then we're still here. How about the Duke of New York City in 2004 or five? Definitely, 100%. That's what Bible prophecy says. Did it happen? No. Guy didn't know. He did not know. Wouldn't it have been better had he said, maybe I get a feeling. Did it have to be thus saith the Lord? And then people flock back and listen some more. You want some more false predictions? Then they all claim a bullseye in the Gulf. Yep, I had that one predicted. No, it's not turning out the way that, <clears throat> that they presented it. Not turning out the way that I've seen it all presented on YouTube. At least with YouTube, what I like, the, the YouTube broadcasters, they, most of them have no money motive whatsoever. You know, YouTube is a little, a little different than radio. But YouTube isn't accurate either. It's just, you know, I take a pulse rate there. You know, take a pulse rate from all the radio. You know, you might as well listen. If you're going to do that, go ahead and listen to Coast to Coast and listen to, uh, listen to all of it then. You know, just, you know, it really doesn't matter what you listen to. It's what you take in and how it influences you. If it, if it destroys your faith where you don't have faith, like if you feel afraid right now, then obviously who you're listening to has done that to you and they have been successful in programming you to be of fear. Let me clue you in on something else. Just when everyone agrees it's really bad and we're really all going to die and it's all over, the Lord will turn it and make it good and make all those people have egg on their face. Shh, don't tell anyone. That's one of the secrets. Yep. Whenever the crowd on Wall Street all runs one way, in other words, a big bubble is created and everyone goes, oh, good times are here. It's the seeds of destruction are already sown in. And it's going to go down. But whenever it gets so bad, people oh, everyone agrees it's so bad it can never recover. Then it will. God loves to confound people who think they really are hot shots. You know, he loves it. What they did with Palin, remember, I actually prophesied over Palin. I had to repent because I was like, yeah, stupid. Yeah, go back to Alaska and bake cookies. I was kind of in that crowd, you know. Then he told me what he was going to do, and I told you. So I, it was a prophecy, and it came due right before our eyes. That should have caused a lot of people to have faith. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it happened exactly as I said it would. But was it me talking or was it God speaking to me, telling me he's going to do this with pay? He's going to lift her up. She's way, way more successful than ever as a state governor that no one ever heard of. She's, she's, she can pack a whole stadium. That's beyond what I even thought God was talking about. And they're still bashing her. And now they're calling Michelle Bachman the poor man's Palin, and uh, or at least Megan uh, McCain is, and I I find that to be uh, disgusting, and that's someone who ought to have their mouth shut because this is she should just you know if she wants to be politics she should be a liberal Democrat is what she really is, and she's just you know trying to move the uh, Tea Party to the left, and um, you know it's not gonna it's not gonna work the Tea Party movement's gonna grow. And, um, you know, basically is, is based on fiscal responsibility, um, cutting spending, government out of our lives, et cetera, et cetera. Take the chokehold off business so they can invest and grow. No one's going to – all Obama's State of the Union was a complete joke. All he talked about was reinvestment, which means, by the way, taxing you more and, and wanting, and, and wanting – uh, to be competitive, it's not going to happen. And then light rail and internet, and it's just stuff that mean is meaningless. People need jobs. They need to get to work. Businesses need government's choke, jackboot thug chokehold taken off of them so they can, you know, prosper. I know that's a dirty word among uh, stupid liberals, but that's what, that's what they need to do so they can hire people to work. 
They need to hire people to work. They can't do it if they're being taxed in Illinois 66%. Companies are fleeing there in droves now. First one to go was Jimmy John's, you know, the uh, restaurant chain. They left. There you go. So that's the solution, not government. Government's not the solution. Government is the problem. Government has to be the one that gets out of the way, not business. Uh, and George, you know, basically the, the policies uh, of free mortgages to people, which is a policy of the left, that's what ruined the economy. Nothing else. That was the main thing that took it down. And we're still paying for that. The a- answer to that is not to tax people more, but to let the chokehold off of business. So I predict Obama will never be successful because he's anti-business. So he will never, any of the things he said in his speech will never happen. There may be some faux recovery before the election to make it look like to try to reelect him because you see, he's really the pony of uh, the KGB and the New World Order and all that. So they're backing him. But he's talking on both sides of his mouth now, not a compromise. Republicans and Democrats are supposed to sing Kumbaya. And this is ridiculous. There should be no compromise whatsoever. None. There should be zero compromise. What they should do is basically dismantle Obamacare, dismantle all these, uh, all the spending, and cut it completely. You'll have um, no illegal immigrant problem then. They will flee in droves. <laughs> when there's no more freebies, they're gone. So that'll be the end of that problem. But that's what they need to do. They need to cut spending and cut the power of the government and, and put it back in balance and stop this whole, you know, BS, Hegelian dialectic, commie regime takeover. That's got to be stopped. Now, Brother Thomas, I think we kind of agree that, you know, there may be a ray of hope, but I, there is no hope in going the way that Obama's going. There is no hope in that. So businesses can't make it, you know? And if businesses can't make it, um, people can't get back to work. Um, we see how there's, you know, the unemployment in other countries is, is just unbelievable as well. I mean, these are people that embrace socialism and they're, they're having a horrible, horrible time because they can't feed their own people. Because socialism never will be a solution. It will always destroy because you run out of other people's money. It's just that simple, folks. I hate to t- and the businesses move away. They're not there to be altruists. They're there to make a profit. They make a profit, and what they do is expand, and then people get hired, and that's how it works. Most of the socialists don't even know where money comes from. They, 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 they don't like it. They want it abolished. They want competition abolished as well. There's never going to be, you know, people will always compete. You get people in a prison yard with nothing and there will be the top dog and the middle management. The whole hierarchy will, will uh, evince itself again because that's human nature. So the idea is to, you know, do the best you can with it. But again, utopian ideology of socialism will only lead to bankruptcy and riots. That's it. It will do the same thing a dictatorship will do. It will lead to bankruptcy and riots. That's it. You think there's socialism in uh, Cuba? No, there's a dictatorship. In Venezuela, it's a dictatorship. What happens to socialist regimes? They become dictatorships. What's the new world order? It's a dictatorship. <laughs> it's not going to take care of people. The whole goal of the dictatorship is to, is to basically suck all the power out of everybody and implode. That's the whole point. That's where it all leads. That's why I'm against communism, socialism, utopianism. You know, you know, these are religions and all these other religions, antichrist, you know, um, cults, new age, all that goes to the same place. All leads to a dictatorial repressive regime that enslaves the people and then kills the people and ultimately just then cannibalizes itself and dies. It's the same thing over and over. That's why I can't have fellowship with anyone who's embracing those ideologies. Cannot have it. Because to me, they are, they're, you know, they're not, I, I know this for a fact. They're not of God. So right there, they're split. They have to make a decision between God or socialism. Between God, because socialism, 
communism, Marxism is a religion. So you know what I'm saying? So make a choice. I know a lot of the people in the uh, psychotronic warfare business, a lot of the victims, they disagree with me. They disagree with me. Um, And they want to fight it through networking and like AA, you know, kumbaya sessions. It's not going to work. I just have to say that. Those things are all infiltrated. That's I've all the 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 the, the groups I've seen, not going to work. Like they said on the air yesterday, they they just devolve into infighting. You know, same thing in the Christian circles, not going to work. If you want Jesus Christ, you're not going to be able to join any circle. Won't work. Anyway, I think you've had enough dose of truth, so I will I will I will uh, beg off here. But um, hey. Write to me. And those of you that um, want to help us out, we, we could use your help now. So uh, please feel free to, uh, um, you know, use the, uh, if you've been listening for a long time and lurking, if you've been blessed, if you learned anything, if it's helped you, you know, freely give, freely receive. We, we take care of people from here. You take care of us. We take care of them. That's the flow. So, you know, uh, you can also write to me with any concerns you may have at 5 Bisbee Court, 109, Box 16, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87508. That's 5 Bisbee Court, 109, Box 16, Santa Fe, New Mexico. You obviously know you're on the Zeph Daniel version. Not to be confused with the Zeph... I guess the Zeph Daniel Project is now the music project, and the Zeph Daniel version is my uh, gabbing, um, which I've been doing and broadcasting. I found out that the people at WWCR, they really like our show. How about that? And... um, yeah, they really like it better than um, all the other, uh, am I boasting here? <laughs> better than everybody else that's on. Yeah, we are their favorite. <laughs> At least for now. Anyway, and I don't know what that means if there's a, I heard there's a clear channel tie-in. And I'm like, you know, that would be very interesting if we ever ended up. Can you imagine like Z, Frankie, and Trish? And then the get, you know, just that two-hour format we do. Maybe make it a three-hour format and go drive time in a clear channel market. We'd have to put up with commercials, right? But can you imagine that, the three of us at a, in, a, in a real radio station? In, we've been through the trenches. I mean, I've, having to mix my own show while I'm on the air, I've learned how to do that. There are very few people that can actually do that. But sitting there with the engineer and sitting in the booth, and, uh, you know, vaping or, you know, having vape, va- vaporizer, you vaporizer smoke, which is legal and saying they're taking calls and stuff. I think it'd be it'd be pretty uh, amazing. You know, if we were uh, uh, if we went national in that way, I think that'd be pretty amazing. First of all, do I think the show would work? Absolutely. People would be thrilled with it. Are they ready for it? I think we're still too far ahead, too far ahead of the, the curve. You know, we're, we're but more and more people are talking about the things we're talking about. So we're kind of right in line. And the other thing, is it entertaining? Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, a, it's an entertaining format. Uh, would it work? Absolutely. Do people want to still embrace the Satanism? Do they, are they still so mad that I, you know, at me for telling the truth and walking around when they can't tell the truth? You know, most of these people can't tell the truth. Oh, can some of these conspiracy... I'm sorry, I was going to leave and now I'm talking again. Can some of these conspiracy people, can they tell the truth about the things we've talked about? No, and they haven't. Answer, no, and they haven't. And the reason they don't is because they feel they lose their job. So how can you trust them if they don't put it on the line? Ask yourselves, how many have really said the truth? I'm still waiting. Well, guess what? They're going to be left behind because here's what's happening. The truth is going to go mainstream pretty soon where every, anyone who doesn't talk the truth will be just gone. The reason you're not going to hear them tell the truth and the people I talked about today, they haven't really told the truth, okay, is because they're not walking the truth. They're not living the truth. They're not going to tell you. They'll, they'll go into conspiracy theory and they'll obfuscate, but they won't get down to the nitty gritty. 
And I believe it's because they're trying to protect their homesteads. In other words, because they're afraid. That's what I think the reason is. They're afraid that they'll be ostracized and lose, you know, their families and their, you know, and all that. That's why I believe they don't tell the whole truth. They tell a part of it, but they don't tell the whole truth. And that I'll see you later. Shalom, shalom. Zeph Daniel here, over and out.